Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to talk about something a little different, something a little peculiar, something kind of strange. And maybe I'll do a review later too, because like I'm I'm itching to do a review. Now that I'm I'm back to doing reviews, like for the most part, like I itch to do these videos. I'm really I get excited because not because I'm excited to watch what I watch, but just excited to talk about it and to share my opinions and to uh, uh yeah to make videos. Period. So first off, on a side note, we went to the fair the past two days. It was really, really fun. The first day I was there to film, because I will be doing a short film with a very special person in September, and she really wanted me to do it, and I am directing it and also kind of doing other things with it too, as you guys can see. Uh, So I went to the fair to shoot like the opening credit sequence because I had the or I think maybe we both came up with the idea uh, to shoot like a a creepy opening sequence at the fair and you see all these different shots that really put you in the mood that you're at a fair because the story is pretty much all about like a carnival and, and stuff like that kind of and so it really worked out perfectly though like there's so many little cool things that happen. In fact, there's one thing that I forgot about that I need to write down right now because I don't want to forget it. It's for my manifestation journal. Excuse me, sorry. And then we we both got food. So yesterday, Safi got a corn dog and also, did she get anything else? I can't remember. <laughs> My mind is a blank. Uh, and then I got saltwater taffy, and there was a really funny story. Oh, wait, no, she got an orange shake-up as well. Uh, but there was a really funny story when I got the saltwater taffy. So there was this truck or food place, I don't if that's what you call it, a truck. It's not really a truck. It's a trailer or something. It was called, like, the Candy Shack, and there was this guy... He had, like, a mean look on his face. I don't know, like, I don't know why. You know, I wasn't doing anything wrong. And I I went up to the window. I wanted to get taffy. That's what I wanted to get. They had all these bags of taffy up on a shelf in the display. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm just going to get one of those bags. Because those are obviously, like, pre-made up so that, you know, he can sell them. (laughs) And then... I said, hey, can I get a bag of taffy? And he was like, whole bag? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, that's weird. (laughs) And then he slammed it down on the the metal. And then he took my money. It's like, God, he's really mad that he's making a sale right now. And it it, it cost me $14, too, uh, which I wasn't anticipating. And I didn't even want to, like, talk about it or, like, negotiate it or anything because he was just being such a weirdo. Uh, And then today we went back just to get lunch and come back. Because yesterday we both ate lunch before we went to the fair because we didn't know if there would be storms or not. And so it was kind of, like, up in the air of if we would be able to go or not. Well, today it was really nice, actually. It was actually almost better than yesterday, although it was more crowded, which I didn't like. I mean, yesterday was like really, really odd because there wasn't anyone in the parking lot ushering you to your uh, seat. I mean, your not your seat, your parking spot. It, you know, it was like everything was like empty and bare. Nobody was on the rides. Nobody was around. Like it was really weird. And so it really made for like the perfect atmosphere to film like a horror video, a horror opening sequence and just so you guys know if you watch that short movie and you're you're left with the thought that oh well that opening sequence was the best part of the whole movie well now you know who's responsible for it because (laughs) 
I was really inspired off of Halloween 4. You know how that movie had the opening sequence that really set like the October halloween atmosphere. I was really inspired off of that when I made this this uh, opening sequence because I grew up watching, and I know I'm going on on like a tangent, but I just thought, why not? I mean, I'm not going to make a whole separate video about the fair. But I grew up watching all these guys on YouTube, like Cool Duder and such. They always used to like have a sequence where they'd shoot video at the fair and like have it to where the characters go to the fair. And it's funny because all those videos always look terrible. And all of the sequences were like just really, really like lame. And and they were just there's there's no personality to them. There's no artistic vision at all. And it's funny because it, it only took me like forty seven minutes to shoot this footage. But like it, it was it's so cool. It's it's perfect. It's the best it's probably one of the best things, if not the best thing I've ever shot. Uh, so, I'm excited about it. And then today, I wanted to get the full fair experience. So first off, we got, she got a pork tenderloin. I got a Polish, Polish sausage. I was debating whether or not to get that or they have foot-long corn dogs. Now that sounds really good, doesn't it, guys? Like, instead of having to get two corn dogs, you just get a foot long one. You know, that'd be really fun. Maybe I'll, excuse me, sorry, maybe I'll do that next year. And then I also got fries. We got a basket of fries that came with the the meal. And I got an orange shake up. And I got two desserts, one that I could share and one that I could have all to myself. I got Deep fried Oreos and a deep fried Twinkie. I know that Davy is probably having a heart attack right now. Uh, well, okay, so this is my this was my first time ever having a deep fried Twinkie. It 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 is probably maybe the best thing I've ever eaten, or one of the top ten best things I've ever eaten. It was so incredibly delicious. It was like tasting heaven deep fried in a cloud of sugar. Uh, like it was just so amazing. And you know what I did to make it even more unhealthy, Davy? <laughs> you know what I did? I went to the refrigerator, I got some chocolate syrup out, and I poured a little bit of that on it too. Uh yeah. <laughs> I'm already paying for it, though, kind of. I, I don't feel awful. I think a lot of IBS has to do with stress, you know, like... If you're really, really stressed out, you're going to feel really, really terrible. But if you're not, you're not going to feel as terrible, hopefully. Or at least that's my experience so far. And all the food and everything was really, really good. Uh, the deep-fried Oreos were pretty interesting, too, because... They kind of remind me of dirt cake, you know, uh, because dirt cake, you, you have the crushed up Oreo and, and the cream is kind of like the cream filling that's already in the cookie. So very, very interesting. And I'm having this terrible glitch on the computer, too, where I can't click on certain things like I cl can't click on pictures on Facebook. Like I'm going to have to restart the computer. That's a little tangent, too. So overall, I had a really good time at the fair, and you know what? I will actually timestamp so that people who don't care about that don't have to watch. So timestamp, 920. So I needed to make a video about meeting someone that I knew in my past life. The whole experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly. For starters, there were a lot of interesting things that went into this event happening in the first place. So this convention, I'd never heard of it before. Okay, like I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Okay, it's, I don't, I don't watch Star Trek. I don't, I'm not really a sci-fi person. Well, I, I, I like sci-fi. It's just, I'm not 
a total like sci-fi geek, you know. And uh as well, this convention used to take place in Maryland, I believe, for like almost the whole entire time that uh it's been held cuz it's been held for like 44 years. And I I probably wouldn't have gone to Maryland or maybe I would have, I don't know. Probably, I don't know. But the fact that magically what happened was the hotel closed down and it got torn down. Magically, the convention moved to Pennsylvania, which is a lot closer for me. In an area where it's actually like one of the top places that I would want to go to for a vacation. You know, like what are the top places for me? Europe, Italy, an Amish country place, and a place that's really cold and has a lot of snow. Those are the top four places. And this place is, you know, in the middle of Amish country. So it was like perfect. It was like the perfect vacation spot for me, someone like me, and also the perfect place in terms of distance. So that was one of the coincidences. Another coincidence was that they had never held this dinner with guests before because I knew that with my anxiety, I probably wouldn't have been able to gather up the courage to to talk to her about such a serious subject matter as past lives uh, if if I had just had to talk to her at, at, at her table. You know, like... Back when I met Chloe Moretz, like, I didn't even say one word to her. I didn't talk to her at all. So, you know, I, that's just, like, who I am, and, and I'm improving. I definitely am getting better, but still, it's a process. So those two things were really, really big coincidences. I mean, I don't know if any other convention or hardly any other convention in history has ever had this type of experience where you can have dinner with the celebrity guests uh, because they want to have people who are, you know, like protecting the celebrities and making sure that no weirdos are, are going to mess with them or anything, you know? So it, there was a lot of like magic that went into this event happening in the first place. So I got there, which also, it's funny that, like, I didn't have any problems when I went there in terms of allergies. As soon as I came back, I had horrible allergy problems. In fact, last night, I don't know what happened. I was trying to do a Toy Story 2 commentary, and I took an allergy pill, and I, I felt like maybe I didn't swallow it all the way, because that's happened before with soft gel tablets. That's why I don't like soft gel pills. Actually, they're not tablets, they're pills. Uh, and so, But then I, I had, like, the worst allergy stuff of all time. It was horrible. It was a nightmare. It was like a... You know, for like two, two or three hours. Uh, and yet, when I was in Pennsylvania, I didn't have any problems at all. I felt really, really good for the most part. And, uh, yeah, so, and I know I've said so a million times, and I'll stop now. When I went to the convention to meet this person who I knew in my past life, the the first meeting that I had with her was pretty rushed. I mean, I wasn't able to talk with her about anything that she had been in because I haven't seen anything that she's ever been in, uh, you know, I um, I asked her to sign this picture, <laughs> and she was like, have you seen that? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she's like, in, in the thing, I sing this song. And she started to sing a little bit, and she's like, do you know the song? And I said, no. <laughs> and she just had the most, like, bewildered look on her face. It was so hilarious. And I was like, you know, oh, boy. <laughs> like. And so, um, after that whole meeting, I was debating whether or not to even do the dinner, 
because after I met her, nothing happened when I met her. Like, there was no, like, move, Hollywood movie type of thing where I shook her hand and then all of a sudden I was, like, seeing visions and I was, like, seeing uh, memories and things. But what happened that was really, really intense and hardcore, hardcore, was that on the car ride back to the hotel, because our hotel was 25 minutes away or so, which actually everyone complained about the hotel, so we probably stayed at the pl- at the good, best place to stay. Uh, that was another good coincidence, you know what I mean? So, oh God, I'm saying so again. As soon as I got in the car, so this was like, Oh, shit, I said it again. Damn it. A couple of minutes after I had met her, probably like 10 to 12 minutes, I started to feel feelings, emotions. And the main emotion was like an overwhelming despair, sadness, depression, horrible, horrible sadness for no reason out of no out of nowhere just completely like i it's you know cuz it's like I, consciously i wasn't sad about anything but i guess subconsciously i could feel it in my soul that i was sad about uh meeting this person again and, like, the, the sadness was so bad, like, it was unbelievable. And I did not expect that. And it was so intense that I debated whether or not to even, you know, do anything later than just stay in the hotel room and, uh, or, or go out somewhere else and get dinner. Because I thought if, if, if I spent, like, three minutes with her not even talking to her. What's going to happen when I spend like two hours with her, talking to her and interacting with her? Um, I was extremely nervous. And then while I was feeling those feelings, I began experiencing a flood of memories. It was sort of like a collage. It was like, Okay, I saw this one scene, and I'm calling it a scene because I wasn't really able to hear what was being said, so it kind of just looked like a movie scene in a way. I saw one scene, then I saw another scene, and another, 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 and it just kept going over and over and over and over again uh, for an entire hour and a half. So that was my (laughs) experience. I guess that you're not, you're, I I don't think you're supposed to meet people who that were in your past life. I don't think because, or I don't think, or maybe you are, but like, it was really, really (laughs) hardcore, sad, crazy, um, for no reason. And then I went to the dinner. I was pretty nervous about it anyway because I couldn't have my water bottle with me. And, like, when you have anxiety, kind of a part of it is that you have, like, a safety item. So, oh, shit, I said so again. Damn it. For a while, when I was having anxiety disorder... I had to put my shirt collars over my ears all day long because it made me feel safer. And then I had to wear this uh, cap on my head all the time because, again, it made me feel safer. And my water bottle has been a consistent thing that makes me feel safer because, you know, I can fidget with the lid and I can take little drinks I guess what you it's what you call nervous drinking <laughs> and I couldn't take the water bottle with me because 
you know, it's like a restaurant type of thing where, you know, you have the water at the table. And so I was potentially, I was, I was thinking I am in for a night from hell. <laughs> I am in for an experience that is going to make me have a two hour long anxiety attack. But the good thing was that I did, I did have my gum and having chewing gum has kind of helped a little bit with the anxiety too, because once again, it makes me feel safer. It's this feeling where like, because I'm doing something as normal as chewing gum, nothing bad could happen, you know, which is like a funny thing because obviously anything bad could happen at any time, but that's the, the psychology behind it. This dinner, every single thing that happened felt like it was meant to happen. So for one thing, it really felt like the evening was revolved around us and that everyone else was just there. Because almost every single thing that happened that evening involved me or her in one way or another. So, like, for the first thing, they picked out the seat for her to sit in, and it was the seat that I actually ended up sitting in. And it was sort of, like, right across from her. And I just happened to sit next to this woman. I can't remember her name, unfortunately, but it was really, it was really funny because it sort of looked and felt like we came there together because we really clicked, we really gelled. She was a very nice person. We had a lot of stuff in common, and she was just so nice that, like, I think anyone could get along with her. And we were both wearing blue. So it was like, and, and so having her there was really nice, too, because she really took away a lot of anxiety. And also, she, at the end of the evening, she was the one who actually ended up, like, talking me up, I should say, to to to, uh, to Barb. Barbara, uh, which is something that nobody's ever done for me before, so it was kind of like an interesting experience. Like, she like gushed about me for like a couple of minutes, and it just completely like filled me up with like confidence to to talk to her what I wanted to talk with her about in the first place. Uh, another thing was that the seat I ended up sitting in was the one where uh, the, the water pitcher was right in front of. So, you guys get what I'm saying with the water? I drank, like, over half the water pitcher. Nobody else at the table drank any water at all. Or if they did, they just drank it out of their one glass. They never got a refill, because I would have had to pour the refill or hand them the pitcher. Uh, but no, I drank almost all the water <laughs> Because of like, you know, it's it's good for anxiety. It really, really helps. And uh, so that was another just huge coincidence. Another thing was that there was this big deal while I was gone getting dinner. Because uh, they didn't, they forgot about the guest having another person with her. So people had to move over a seat. And there wasn't enough seats for this couple to sit together and and apparently they were having like this big debate and dilemma and having like a terrible time with thinking about oh no we're not going to be able to sit together and so i i gave up that seat to sit in the seat that i sat in and everybody seemed like they were really thankful that i did that and it seemed like it was yet another thing that made her notice me more and so like it it just it was really really weird I didn't feel any sort of feelings. I didn't experience any memories for the rest of that evening. So that's like kind of like a a downer. But um, what was good was the fact that like everything else was really, really weird and how it played out. Like it felt like an otherworldly type of experience. <sighs> Let's see, what else should I mention before I get to the the big bang, before I get to the part where... Uh, you really freak out. Hmm. Eh. 
nothing I don't I don't think there's really much else that I could say. But eventually it came time for it, it came time where people started shifting around seats, which was really, really nice. Where we could all get up close to her and talk to her one on one. Because it was it was a big table, you know, so it was hard to do that. Uh, it was very loud, like especially when I was talking to her, because I don't like raising my voice, especially to someone who I like and someone who I want to like me. So uh, eventually, it came time to where I got to talk to her one on one, and I was really, really. <laughs> nervous about talking to her because I did not want to get kicked out and I did not want for her to misunderstand my story and for her to be like upset that I would come there and, and talk to her about such a, a sensitive kind of subject that, you know, she doesn't have to talk about if she doesn't want to. And I talked to her about it and I'm not going to say what was said completely. There was one funny thing where uh, I kept on saying that I was Jay, and she, she thought I was saying that he was gay. And so, and so there was like a misunderstanding there, and that, that, was, that was really hilarious. Like I was like, no, no, he was not, and I, I am not. And so that was like a big, because it was so loud once again. But... A very weird coincidence is that, and I don't remember the particulars of the story because honestly, my anxiety was getting to me a little bit and it was very, very loud. It was hard to hear, but she has been to a, a therapist or hypnotherapist before so that she could regress back to when she was a baby so that she could remember her earliest memories for some reason. I can't remember why. It was a really interesting story. I wish I could remember because it would be really, really helpful to say. Uh, but it was so weird that she had done that because, like, that led to her telling me that I should go to a hypnotherapist and so that I can fully remember I mean, that's pretty bizarre, guys, isn't it? I mean, just think of all the people in the world, of all the celebrities in the world, you think that any other celebrity in that entire room had ever done hypnotherapy before to remember their earlier life memories or to even remember a past life? No. I guarantee it. You want to bet? Like, I guarantee it. So that was really, really strange. As I said, I'm not going to say exactly what was said, but it was a very positive conversation, and it was totally, totally amazing. It really, it, it felt almost like a, something that was like a dream. Like it felt like I could have written it as a scene. Like that's how surreal it was. Like every single thing that was being said. I wish that I had been able to talk more with her, but there were other people who wanted to talk to her. Uh, cuz she didn't she wasn't able to get all of the details uh, cuz it's it's a long story you know but she believes me so that's another thing is that she i i think that she really did believe me which was really really unexpected like honestly i did expect for like a positive conversation hopefully but I didn't expect for her to believe me. So that's what was really, really surprising. The one thing that I really wish that I could have asked her is if I reminded her of him in any way. That would have been like the number one thing that I really <laughs> wanted to ask, and I just, you know, didn't have enough time. So overall... I really can't wait. I really hope I get to meet other people from my past life because I really hope that I can continue to release all the feelings that I have and all the feelings that I would have so that I can move forward. And uh, because, like, you know, 
people aren't supposed to remember. It's very rare for people to remember uh, their past life at all. Any of them. Like, you're lucky if you remember one of them. But I've remembered multiple. I remembered a fragment or two of other ones. So the fact that this one has been so (laughs) detailed, I really think it was meant to happen. And I really think it's meant to happen so that uh, we can learn what really happened on that night. Because they did not tell the truth. There, there was a cover up. Uh, it was, it was clearly, clearly something that was orchestrated by someone who wasn't the guy. And I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to summon him up here. But it's really, really interesting. The whole experience. So anyways, please like this video and comment and tell me what you think. And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos about my past life as Jay Sebring. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.